Amen, amen. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we will continue in the service this morning. Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you again, Lord, for this time, this place, these people. But Lord, most importantly, we thank you for your presence. If it weren't for you, Lord, the fellowship wouldn't be so sweet. Lord, it wouldn't be worth the time and effort and energy to get up, get dressed, get ready. And although it's been good, it's been fun in some ways, Lord, to hang out with church family, with family and friends, Lord, this morning, it wouldn't be worth much if it weren't for the purpose of getting together, Lord, to listen to your word, to glorify your name together, Lord, to be a unified church family. So, Lord, I pray this morning that, Lord, we would adhere, Lord, to your words, that we would listen to your words, not a mere man standing up here, Lord, but, Lord, to the words of truth that come from this Bible. And, Lord, that we would practice, and not just practice, but, Lord, that we would follow wholeheartedly after your heart. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn to Psalm chapter 100. Very familiar psalm. Very familiar psalm. And we're going to get into it in just a minute. But this morning, if I were to ask you to define Christianity, I know uh, Pastor Andy Stanley has done this at his church. I think it's North Point. I might be wrong on the, the name. But uh, anyway, in, in the Atlanta area, he, uh, he did a series called Christian. And in his opening message, he asked his church congregation, he said, you know, if I were to ask you what Christianity means to you, what does it mean to be a Christian? I'm sure I would get a lot of different responses back. We would all have our different, I guess, definitions for what it means to be a Christian. And if you think about it, we probably would get a lot of different answers back. There would be a lot of similarities. But when you narrow it down to follower of Jesus, it gets a little bit more specific. And I think sometimes the lines have blurred, and we've, uh, in the American church especially, when you consider the world at large, the American church has settled for Christianity, just identifying with that. You know, we like to identify with things, especially when it's around certain groups of people. It's easier in our church family to identify with Christianity. And in the world, it's not always easy. And, you know, there's a lot of um, belittling that takes place and a lot of uh, hate that takes place um, outside of the church and outside of Christianity towards, I guess, political views of Christianity uh, at large here in the States so, and, and also in the world. But when you say follower of Jesus, it's more specific. You know, Luke, I think, I believe it's in Luke 9, 23 says, if anyone would follow me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Following Jesus is the point of Christianity. So don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to knock the term Christianity, but I believe that we should closely identify it. It should be hand in hand with following Jesus. That should be understood. This morning I want to talk to you about serving with our own strength and then serving in his strength. And so uh, the title of the message today is Checklist Christianity versus Following Jesus, okay? Um, I want to start with a, just a little confession. Uh, am I the only person that has bad dreams? Anybody have bad dreams? Sometimes even frequently. And you like wake up and you wonder, what was that? You're like, really? And sometimes you wake up, you like maybe did something awful in your dream. You're like, you wake up and you feel like you did it. You're like, you're like, I know I didn't do that, but that happened in my dreams. Am I this evil person? Like, you know, like what's wrong with me? And, uh, you know, all bad dreams happen to everybody. Uh, but it seems like especially um, here lately, I've had bad dreams about messing up, messing up with with my church family, okay? And, and, uh, and I hope and pray that in reality, you're not going, yeah, Brother Jake, it's about time you dream the truth. You know, I, I hope and pray that's not it. But I have, I have dreams about messing up all the time. And talked with another minister friend of mine who uh, recently just con confessed that he's having similar things happen to him. And really all it is is Satan, but it feels so real, so vivid sometimes. But uh, I will dream about going to, to you know, camps that, that, the, that we put on for the students, like Thrive and whatnot. 
Uh, by the way, ADD side note uh, announcement, we're having a Thrive Share Time tonight, and we would love for you to come and attend for the past several months. Once a month, we generally try to meet uh, in the Youth Worship Center as a way of both integrating <laughs> uh, the adult congregation with the younger congregation. And so it's, a, it's an attempt on both sides to have more interaction between each other. And so we would love for you to come over to the Youth Worship Center. Our new uh, youth intern for the summer, Jordan Rainey, uh, and a couple other people have helped out so much with uh, fixing up the Youth Worship Center here lately, the entire building. And so we're just thankful for all the help. So please come over, check out what's going on, what God's doing. And please listen to what God... Um, did and what he's still doing through the hearts of your students tonight because without your financial support and prayers um, the majority I dare to say of the students would not be able to go to Thrive uh, Camp so they, they did a lot of nitty-gritty painting and yard work and all kinds of hands-on things this year that were a little bit different from the backyard Bible club style ministry that we're accustomed to so please come and hear them share tonight at six um, but anyway so I have bad dreams about camps sometimes, like just everything's haywire, everything's off kilter. Um, uh, I, I've had dreams. Uh, it's worse than like being late for class, uh, you know, but like where you miss the majority of a service, you like walk in and I'm like, I've walked in and felt like Brother Brian gave me the evil eye, like you're late, you're a staffer, you know, and I'm like walking up trying to sneak in in the balcony. Uh, I bet none of you balcony folks ever do that, but uh, <laughs> somehow sneaking in in the back, but uh you know, I just have these horrible dreams. I'm like, man, I'm on staff here at Friendship, and I hate having these type of dreams. The, the worst ones, I grew up as a preacher's son, and I've also served in different churches, um, you know, since I've been married uh, to my wife, and even prior to marrying Diane. Um, I, <laughs> I've, I've, I've served and, uh, you know, been in a lot of churches, and, and the worst bad dreams are when all the churches are mixed together or several of those churches are mixed together, and you've got all kinds of crazy under the same house. And you're like, what is going on? And you have these crazy... Um, just conflicts that make no sense going on. Uh, last night, I actually dreamed I was on a children's uh, camp trip, and uh, a father who was a chaperone with me actually punched me in the face. I'm not going to mention his name this morning. He's here, but there was a big miscommunication. He punched me in my face, and that's the first thing I said to Diane when I woke up this morning. I'm like, so-and-so punched me in my face last night. And she's like, did you punch him back? I'm like, no, but I wanted to. So... <laughs> um, so it's, you know, crazy stuff. And, and I say all that to say that the devil is always in the details. He loves to attack us not only in our waking hours, but unless I pray, and I have to remind myself, and when I do pray, it does help. But when I pray that I'll have a good night's rest, usually the Lord, um, unless he sees fit that I'll be tested for whatever reason, uh, I'll get some good sleep. But, um, you know, a lot of times when I, when I fail to pray, and ask the Lord to help me to have good dreams and have good rest. I'll have these weird dreams. And all, the point of all that that I, I share with you this morning is we can be so close to being right, but be so off, so misunderstood. There can be miscommunications. There can be conflicts when things are not God's way. When we make it about us, that's where we fail. So this morning, I got a couple, I got just a, you know, the student pastor in me has a, a, before we visit the scripture, I got some song lyrics I want to visit. They're very familiar songs, and I want you to correct me, okay? I need a little help. I don't know if you knew that about me, but I need a little help this morning, okay? Um, with some correction, okay? So you get to rebuke me, okay? So it's like my bad dreams all over again. All right, um, there's a song from the Disney movie, The Lion King, Hakuna Matata, what a wonderful phrase. Hakuna Matata, ain't no passing phase. What, what lyric? There was one word that was off. It's phase. It should be what? Craze. Ain't no passing craze, okay? Um, our hymn that we're singing during our invitation this morning, I, I won't sing all this. Some of y'all are like, man, he's going to sing everything. I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is great. Child of greatness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. There's two words that are off. Small, your strength indeed is small, child of weakness, okay, not greatness. All right, I, the country boy in me has got to sing a little bit of this, okay, y'all forgive me, a little Waylon Jennings here for you, TV show made it popular. Just a good old boys, never meaning no harm, eats all you ever saw. There was one word that's off, beats, not eats, that's me, I like to eat a lot, y'all, but 
beats all you ever saw, okay? The temptations. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got the month of March. May. Okay, thank y'all. Thank y'all for clearing it up. I, yeah, I was, I was just a little confused this morning. All right, so it's, here's the deal. Almost getting it right signifies failure. Sin is missing the mark, and to miss the mark is, is failure. And we do not, as Christians, need to um, almost get it right. I think sometimes when we serve in our own strength, we miss the mark. We fail greatly. We fail miserably. And this morning, I want to talk about getting it right. Not the whole checklist Christianity. I remember in Sunday school as a child, there were, um, you know, and even as a teenager, and I don't know if y'all still have these in any of your classes, but did you read your Bible this week? How many days per week did you read it? Did you bring an offering today? Did you, you know, tell somebody about Jesus? You know, there's all these little checklist things that we're encouraged to check off, you know. And even if we don't see those physically, there's a mental checklist, and we always judge ourselves and evaluate ourselves according to that checklist. And if we miss something, we're like, man, I'm just not doing good, uh, doing this whole Christian thing. I'm following Jesus. is not going as well as I would like for it to go. And we beat ourselves up a lot. And granted, there's two ends of the spectrum. You, I don't think you should always needlessly guilt and shame yourself and be this miserable person. But at the same time, I don't think we need to be like, hey, I got it all together. Everything's great because I do keep the checklist. I, I check every single thing on the checklist. I'm, it's all good. I think there needs to be a balance in us recognizing that following Jesus involves us embracing grace, being embraced by grace. The, the song that Allie sang this morning, if grace is an ocean, <laughs> then we're all sinking. We are all sinking in an ocean of grace because guess what? You don't deserve grace. I don't deserve grace. But God freely gives grace through who? Through his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all of our sins. And so this morning, let's check out Psalm chapter 100, and then we will continue. It says, shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Shout joyfully. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. And this morning, I want to reiterate something. Almost getting it right ain't right, okay? You ever hear somebody say, that, that ain't right, I tell you. You know, like, uh, it, there is a lot in this world that ain't right, and if you're all into English and whatnot. Hey, that's in the dictionary now, ain't. But anyway, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. We should exalt his name and make much of his name, not our own. We're called to serve the Lord with gladness in verse 2, coming into his presence with singing. We are called to serve with gladness, not madness or anger, not sadness, like, oh, i got to come to church again today, not obligation or guilt, but because we get to, because of grace, we get to love God back. We get to serve him. We get to love him. We get to tell other people about him. So we get to serve with gladness, not, again, out of some obligation. Verse uh, 3 says, again, know that the Lord, he's God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Do you truly know him? Do you have a relationship with Jesus this morning? Simple head knowledge about Jesus does not grant one access to the kingdom of God, both here on heaven, uh, here on earth, and also in heaven. Do you know him? Do you have that personal relationship with him? It doesn't come about because you were dunked in some baptismal waters. It doesn't come about because your granddaddy, your grandmama, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, whoever, your best friends know Jesus. It comes about because your life has been changed. You have been changed by Jesus. That's what following Jesus, that's what Christianity is all about. Christianity is about Christ. It's about Jesus. It's about us surrendering all, truly surrendering to his presence to do things his way. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, verse 4, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. 
Are you grateful this morning? Are you grace-filled? The same grace that was extended to you should be exemplified and modeled through you toward others. Are we full of grace toward others? Or do we enjoy pointing the finger when we got a plank in our own eye and there's specks in other people's eyes? We love to point out the obvious sins. We love to point out what's, oh, that's a big sin. So-and-so was at the bar last night, and they had, they had one too many. They were getting their dance on. Baptist people don't dance. It's in the, it's, hey, we, we're not supposed to. I'm going to get in trouble later. Some of y'all are going to like, take this stuff the wrong way. and It's all good. Here, here, here's the deal. We love to point out obvious sins. Yes, the scripture says, don't get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay? We love to point out, oh, well, that, you know, that person, they're kind of, they're that way. I can't believe, can you believe they came to our church this morning? Praise the Lord they came to our church this morning. Hopefully they feel welcome in our church this morning. We should never turn somebody away just because of a, a more obvious sin than ours. Maybe you struggle with the, the sin of gossip. Hey, I'm just going to be honest. We always want to make fun of the girls. I'm just going to be honest. Some, some of you guys, including myself, we can be just as bad about gossip, you know? And we love to throw in that southern bless their heart, you know, like, or like, you know, and then say, hey, it's a prayer request. And then we talk about it forever instead of actually going to the Lord in prayer about it. Gluttony, hey, what's up? Who likes cheeseburgers? Not a cheeseburger, singular, plural. Yes, me. Gluttony is a sin, y'all. But we like to talk about the big sins. We love to point our fingers when God has filled our bodies, our spirits with his presence. And if his presence dwells in us, then we should extend grace toward others. Does that mean we should just be cool? We'd be, be chill about whatever? Hey, you, you do you and I'll do me. Now, hey, if somebody claims to be a Christian, we do have a right to address them. Maybe not in a group setting, but in, in, in a one-on-one session and say, look, you know, brothers, you can address a brother. Say, look, I love you, man. But I, I couldn't help but notice what you were looking at on your phone a while ago. And that, man, that's just not good, but, uh, brother. Hey, I've had the same struggle. Oh, we don't want to admit sins, do we? We don't want to be transparent. I've had the same struggle, man. Can you pray for me and I'll pray for you? Letting people know that we love them and we care about them. Not, <laughs> bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? Okay? We're so good at pointing the finger. We need to be better at embracing folks and loving on them. Not patting sin on the head, but going to them and saying, look, I'm, I'm not perfect either, and I need Jesus way more than you do probably. But here, here's the deal. We all need Jesus. We all need grace. So are you grateful? Are you grace-filled? Are you loving? Or are you hate-filled, complaint-filled? Some of y'all... Now, I said, y'all, man, I really am going to get in trouble this morning. And I just got to confess, it was around 11 last night when I got a call, okay, that I was supposed to be preaching this morning. So y'all forgive me. I'm just kind of kind of going with it this morning. So I'm not saying y'all. I'm just saying folks in general, okay? Um, <laughs> some people are blessed with the spiritual gift of complaining. It's like they want a committee for it. Let's have a complaining committee. And let's fuss about what's not right in the church. Let's just get together and let's fuss. We need to be full of grace. We need to be compassionate and not have a complaining spirit. Because ultimately all that reflects when we participate in those things that are negative, that are against the Lord and against just thanking him for who he is and coming together in a unified fashion, that all signifies that we lack faith. And guess what? Friendship Baptist Church is not a perfect church. Brother Brian says that every Sunday, I believe. Friendship is not a perfect church. There's always a few knotheads at every church. We're not going to name anybody or any, any folks this morning. I promise you, I'm not even thinking any personalities. I'm just saying there's always knotheads everywhere you go. Every single church I've been in, the, from the best church to what I would consider some of the worst churches that, that I've been in growing up, there's good folks, a lot of good folks, and then there's some bad folks. And I'm not saying it's right, but it's, it, it happens. 
You got corrupt people in, in politics. You got corrupt people in the school systems. You got uh, bad folks who love to run their mouth uh, on the sideline, pretending they're a coach when the coach is out there doing his very best on the field. You know, you know how it goes. There's, there's folks who love to fuss everywhere. But Jesus is why we come together. He is the unifying factor. He is who we have come to worship this morning. And I hope and I pray that you are loving Jesus first and foremost, that your adoration, your attention, your first priority is looking to Jesus Christ. And some of y'all are going, man, you might be preaching a little bit harder than you normally do, Jake. Guess what? I'm, I'm stepping all over my toes. They got bruises. They're purple and blue and stuff. Because guess what? I struggle with the same stuff. Guess what? Ministers are human. None of us are perfect. But we need to seek to be thankful when we come to his house, when we leave these doors and go out. We need to exemplify grace and thanksgiving and serving the Lord with gladness. Let's move on. For the Lord is good, verse 5, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. John 15 states that apart from him we are nothing. He is the vine, we are the branches. He is good. We find our holiness that we sang about this morning and our goodness being rooted and grounded in and through his presence. His love never fails. He is ever faithful. I love the, the end of this scripture in verse 5. It says, wraps up the chapter, all generations. His faithfulness to all generations. Are you passing his love down the pipe to your spouses, with each other, encouraging each other, with your family members, your sons and daughters, extended family, your neighbors, those you work with, and so forth? Are, are we passing his love down the pipe. His, are we talking about his faithfulness? Because his faithfulness is rooted in love. You see, God, as it talks about in verse 3, it's he who made us, we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He created us because, guess what? He wants us to love him back. He wants us to love him wholeheartedly. Colossians three twenty three and 24 says this, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. We fall short when we practice Christianity for ourselves and or for others. We and others will grow when we serve Jesus for Jesus. So are you serving for man and yourself or are you serving for Jesus? The late Leonard Ravenhill was a well-known evangelist and author who has inspired thousands and thousands of people and led many to know the Lord through him being faithful to preach the word. Um, and a quote from him is that revival is not when the top blows off, but rather when the bottom falls out. I believe every single person in this room can identify with that. Not every day is a happy day. Not every day is a good day. And for those of us, and I believe it's all of us, for those of us in this room today, we all need revival. It's all the time. Even if you're uh, you know, on the spiritual mountain high or if you're in the lowest of low valleys, we need revival. And again, don't miss what this late wise pastor had to say. Revival is not when the top blows off, but it's when the bottom falls out. Think about it. The times when you've drawn closest to the Lord, for those of you who are following Jesus already, have been in your lowest of lows. You realize your desperation then, and I'm afraid we as American Christians allow ourselves to be comfortable with a clock-in, clock-out system, checklist Christianity, and it's not enveloping the entirety of who we are. We as Christians should be living for Christ all of the time, not just some of the time, but all the time. Many, many, many years ago, um, a Chinese Christian visited the United States and toured churches here. At the end of the trip, he was asked what he thought about American spirituality, and he answered, I am amazed 
and how much the church in America can accomplish without the Holy Spirit. This morning, my prayer is that Friendship Baptist Church, that you guys, that myself, and our brothers and sisters here in Grenada, and in our country, would be people who operate through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can do a lot of great things and miss the mark. We can do a lot of good, godly, busy work and miss the mark. Please do not miss the point of Christianity. Do not miss Jesus. I hope and I pray that you know Jesus this morning. Maybe you've known about him for years and years, but you've never actually followed him. I pray today will be the day that you begin to follow him because of your life being changed. Maybe today you showed up not knowing what to expect, whether you're a long-time comer, just coming to visit, whatever your reason for being here, I hope and I pray that you don't miss the point of why we gather as a church. It's for Jesus. And it's so that we can encourage and lift up each other and point each other toward Jesus. Because when we make ministry and make church about ourselves, we fail miserably. Let's look to Christ together. Church family, we're going to pray, and we're going to have a time of invitation. There's still plenty of altar space up here. If you would like to come and pray, I invite you to do so. If you'd like somebody to pray with you, I'd love to pray with you. I told you already I'm not perfect, but I, I love you, and I love serving here. And I love Jesus, and I know that he loves you. Pray however you feel led, and let's not miss the point. It's all about Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for allowing us, Lord, to gather in your house to serve you, to love you, to be changed by you for the better. Forgive us, God, when we make things about ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, when we, when we miss the mark, even if it's just by a little. We're still missing it completely. Lord, thank you for allowing us to serve you with gladness. Thank you for being the reason that we can have gladness in our hearts. Thank you for Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.